All right, everybody, this is Ross, and welcome to part three of our tour of our backyard orchard and our gardens. And I hope you guys could stick with me for this one. Thank you for getting to the ends of the other ones, and I hope you guys will check out part one and part two of 2020. We're now on March 27th, guys, and things are in full bloom now. Um, these are my stone fruits here that I have chopped back quite a bit. Um, in order to fix the form of these trees. And what I'm noticing now, we may actually end up getting through this potential frost. We still have a potential frost all the way through May 1st. Um, and I think we're looking pretty decent. What I'm noticing on these trees, particularly on the, uh, these plums right here that are in full bloom, is that there's all kinds of species of wasps and bees on these trees. And believe it or not, there is actually some honeybees. And I don't know anybody in the area that is beekeeping, uh, but, and I've never seen honeybees in this yard, but they're here. And I think that there's probably a wild swarm in the area that uh, I can maybe even capture if I wanted. Um, I don't, never done it before, but capturing a swarm would be amazing. I'd obviously have to get myself some uh, beekeeping equipment, some hives and all that, and all that set up. But wouldn't that be wonderful if I could get myself a wild swarm? Um, even if I can't, it's still incredible that there is honeybees here and I'm seeing so many different species of bees. Um, I think the ecosystem here really changes every single year and it's just wonderful. Just by adding some more flowering plants, as many as you can, it's incredible what happens over time. Um, you never know. I mean, the bug population here gets less and less, and the good bug population gets higher and higher. So it's really, uh, it's just a wonderful thing. It's wonderful to see. I'm happy to be doing my part, you know? Um, so these things are wonderful. They're gorgeous. I've just, I could watch these bees all day, I'm telling you. Um, and it's a beautiful day out here today as well, guys. We also have down here, uh, I keep probably stepping on it, but is our black raspberry and I have them pretty close to other varieties of raspberry like our reds or purples or yellows and they recommend that you don't have them so close it's really all about the aphids and the disease that the black raspberry may have I don't normally get aphids on these raspberries so I'm not too worried about that disease however if it becomes an issue I may I may end up ripping it out oh well right but I'm gonna try all these different types of raspberries. They all have different colors. The production on these, as to give you guys my expectations, should be really high. I'm pretty bullish now on these, uh, these plums and these stone fruits, and that they actually could produce some decent fruit for me. Um, I'm standing on my June bearing patch of Early Glow. And these guys are gonna produce some decent amount of fruit. There's a lot less of them though, a lot less of these strawberry plants for whatever reason. I think I may have pulled some out. Some aren't doing all that well, but I should get a decent amount of strawberries just in this little area. Like you wouldn't believe guys, I'm telling you, it's crazy how much these strawberries produce. We've got honeyberries flowering here. We've got a currant here. We've got a gooseberry there. And then right in here, is our pears. And this is an Asian pear that's actually flowering and should be in full bloom very, very soon, which is very frightening, guys. I mean, I'm telling you, so much of this now is like waking up in full bloom. It's really starting to freak me out, but I am pretty optimistic now at this point. Here's my other pears, my European pears. They're also flowering on the tips, on spurs. Um, they're doing really well. I should have decent production. I'm excited now that a lot of this has been in the ground now for an entire year, with the exception of some of these berry plants here. They should start to really take off. We got the figs in the ground. I even have some alpine strawberries in here that I've seeded last year. We transplanted in. My persimmons are doing well right here, and I have two persimmons that probably I should take out. I have a uh, a Guang Yang, which will stay. I think this is an Asian um, non-astringent type. And then I also have a Seijo over there, my pride and joy. Finally got myself a Seijo. Very few of the grafts last year took. And I don't know why that is. I think I had very young rootstock. And uh, 
just is what it is. I think this year is the big year for some of these persimmon trees and I'm really excited for the future. The greenhouse we've shown you guys before and uh, I think I'm gonna keep that update for a different video. So much growth is going on in that greenhouse. There is a tree right here and I think it's because this is a very warm spot in the yard. This fig is actually leafing out. It's starting to bud which is really awesome to see um, that some of these figs, because we have them positioned well, are actually getting their shit together here. They are starting to flower, or starting to put out growth. And this is exactly what we want. We want the model to be woken up by about April 15th, if possible, and uh, on their way to a good season. Here we have our currants. These are red. I think all of these are red, if I'm not mistaken. Just super vigorous, healthy plants. It's incredible what these guys are able to do year after year. And there's gonna be a ton of fruit on here. Um, just gotta net them, because the birds will love, they love this stuff. I'm about to make current jam for the first time. Here is our citrus tree. I bet you guys didn't know I had this, did you? Um, this is a, um, a seedling of a uh, trifoliate orange or flying dragon that actually tastes pretty decent. You can use it in some cooking. This is one of the better ones um, that they found in bread and people have been trying to get a decent tasting trifoliate orange. This is one that I picked up from Cliff England at England's nursery. We have some mulberry replacements as well. And these guys I imagine will start waking up soon. I can begin my grafts. Believe it or not, we did our video on pruning those stone fruits and we actually have some grafts that are awake or have taken and have started to, uh, to grow away from the rootstock. And then also here is our Everest seedless grape. And this is one that I've always been looking forward to because it's a conquered type that's seedless, that's disease resistant, you name it. Um, and we've also got our jujubes in this location in an effort to see if they're gonna fruit this uh, for me heavily uh, because they weren't doing all that well in a pot. And this is the next step here is to figure this out. If they're gonna do well here in this location with enough sun, with enough heat, who knows? Um, we'll find out. And then let me take you guys across the yard. We have more peaches and we had more nectarines that I was showing you guys in part two, we have some of those also in the front and also the persimmon. I wanna get across the yard here to some of this other stuff. We have many mulberries around the yard that I have just been setting up. Here we have a bush cherry. And this guy should also flower. This is Romeo or Juliet and its partner is over there, which we're gonna go over right now. And I have to tell you, that these mulberries are actually um, all gonna be grafted onto Girardi. I have all these seedlings, three different seedlings. So I have three Girardi trees throughout the yard. They get to a six by six size, kind of like these honeyberries here would. And this whole area is just coming out beautiful, I think. The way that I've organized this with the, the blueberries in the middle as sort of an understory to some persimmons in the back also a persimmon right here. Um, they'll tower over and then the, tall, the tallest tree is probably gonna be this chi, this J. This is now leafing out. We'll see if this guy can hold on to its fruit, just like the jujube. If putting them in the ground, getting the roots dug in a bit more is gonna really help that situation with the fruit set, with the fruits falling off, et cetera, et cetera. We have a ton of Mar de Bois plants down here too many in fact, and I really wanted to rip some out. I never got around to it. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna have so many strawberries, it's ridiculous. Here's a lot of blueberries, by the way, that are forming. This tree has, or this bush has a ton of them on it. The production is gonna be even better than last year, of course, right? All these big buds. I had thought maybe they wouldn't produce all that well this year. Uh, that one isn't look like it, it's going to this year. Whereas last year it put out a really heavy crop. 
But it looks like overall, I'm having a pretty decent year for blueberries. Um, here is also the second bush cherry. I think they're quite, a, quite old now at this point, probably three years old since I got them. And here is another mulberry that will graft. So that's kind of the video. And uh, I hope to see you guys soon for part, well, not part four, but however, this stuff is looking great. I hope to see you guys for future videos throughout the orchard, throughout the garden this year. Um, you guys really got a great view on what's to come. I hope everybody is enjoying their time out there, staying safe. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care, guys.